Wow. Okay. Lawlers, welcome back to another beginner champ guide. Today we're going to be covering off Pike. If you are new to this champion, you've played him a couple times, you can't figure him out, or you've played him a bunch of times and you can't figure him out, this is going to be the guide for you at a very fundamental level. We're going to talk about his runes, we're going to talk about his items and build path, his abilities and skills, very basic, easy to replicate combos that you guys can use in your first few games with him to start to pop off Snowball and have a bunch of fun getting a ton of kills as this mid lane flexing support kind of slippery assassin character. So runes on Pike. We're going to try and make sure we're running Hail of Blades. We're going to follow that up with Cheap Shot. Zombie Ward and Ultimate Hunter. This Domination Rune Tree page setup is really good for your slippery playstyle where you want to get in, do some quick short bursty trades and get out. And then of course your your kit's so reliant on your ultimate that resets and executes and kind of is your identity. I personally like to run Ultimate Hunter to make sure it's as as available as possible and its cooldown is as small as possible. Secondary tree is going to be bone plating and unflinching. Bone plating is great because as a melee range assassin for the most part if you do take damage or you do have a trade happen you want to try and mitigate it as much as that damage and then of course with the unflinching if you ever do happen to get caught or stunned or slowed or cc'd you want that duration to be as, as small as possible so you can get out and stay pretty slippery. Okay, so those are the runes that you want to run in either case, whether you're playing bot lane uh, support or mid lane pike. And then in terms of the build here, I'm going to focus a, a little bit more on just mid lane for the rest of this video. But again, this is pretty easily transferable to playing pike support. In the starting slots, you want to make sure you pick up Doran Shield, one health potion, and then a stealth ward or an oracle lens at the start. It really doesn't matter too much. Um, you are going to take damage in lane as pike when you go for last hits your melee range a lot of the enemy characters that you're going to be playing against in the mid lane are going to be ranged champions they are going to hit you so you want to make sure you have that door and shield to gain back as much health as possible and just survive the laning phase now in terms of building towards a core set with pike we have to understand how he scales and how he starts to be more effective as the game goes if you look at all of pike's abilities here at the bottom of my screen as i scroll through them they all scale up off of lethality and attack damage so the broken shield and that that orange axe icon so this passive scales off lethality and attack damage the q scales off attack damage the w scales off lethality the e scales off lethality and attack damage the r scales off lethality and attack damage right his whole kit lethality and attack damage so that means when you go to build for pike you want to make sure you're in this assassin tree and you're picking items that build towards attack damage and lethality okay now my rush item for Pike is going to be Umbral Glaive in every single game. It's such a good item because it allows you with the Blackout Passive to destroy enemy wards, paired up with your Rune Zombie Ward, put wards down. So when you're playing Pike Mid, you're going to be roaming a lot, top, bot, enemy jungle, your own jungle. You're basically a roaming support slash jungler that's looking to help people out and steal some kills and share gold with your enemy or with your ally champions. Umbral Glaive gives you such a vision advantage, plus the attack damage, plus lethality and the ability haste. That's your rush item. After that, you're going to try and rush mobility boots. This is going to give you a ton of move speed and while out of combat, increase the move speed. Again, you're roaming a ton as Pike mid you want to make sure that you have that ability to roam around the map as fast as possible be the fastest moving character in the game and get to situations where you can start to press r on people and pick up kills and share gold with your team and accelerate the game like that once you have that uh, mobility boots picked up the next rush item is going to be one of the mythic items Generally, if you're just looking for something stock standard to run in every single game as you learn the champion that you won't go wrong with, Duskblade of uh, Drakthar is the pick here. The passive Night Stalker, after you kill someone, you're going to turn invisible for 1.5 seconds. It's so annoying, especially you're going to probably be resetting and getting multiple kills in team fights or skirmishes. It's going to make really really hard for people to try and find you in those fights even if you do dive in for a kill so that's going to be the item that you're going to rush and that gives you your core item set of umbral glaive mobility boots and dusk blade okay you get these three items you're going to start to have a lot of fun with pike in the game and hopefully snowball and get a ton of kills all right 
So that's the runes, that's the build. Let's jump into the lane now and talk about his passive and his abilities and some very basic combos that you guys are going to want to use in your game to start to grab some kills. Okay, cool. So we got our enemy dummy set up here. Um, we're going to be using some abilities to experiment with what's possible with Pike here and some of the combos that you guys are going to want to copy. Um, before we get into all that, the Gift of the Drowned Ones here, it's going to be tough to show in a practice mode, but essentially if you take damage, you're going to see a gray bar um, come up as your green health bar goes down. If you ever do take damage, you can get some of that health back. If you just pop out of enemy vision, your health bar is going to start to refill back up um, in the gray bar that you're going to see taking its place as you lose your health. The more attack damage and the more lethality you build, the more damage you can be stored to heal back once you go out of sight so make sure again you're building those lethality and attack damage items so you can gain health back when you go out of vision okay all right with that out of the way we're going to talk about pike's q which is going to be the first ability that you're going to max with pike it's your bread and butter ability it has two aspects the first one is just a stab it is a skill shot so you could miss it if you stab wide but the hitbox is pretty generous you can see there i'm hitting this uh enemy dummy even though i'm going way left and way right okay the stab prioritizes enemy champions so even if there was a little bit of a minion wave in front of this enemy champion as long as he was within my range of the just a quick pressing of the Q to stab, I will still prioritize that enemy champion and deal a bunch of damage. Okay? It does add up. The damage from this ability will really start to hurt as you build lethality and attack damage. You can see here that's dealing 275 damage just with a little quick poke and a little quick stab. Okay? Now the second part of this is you can press and hold your Q button to channel a longer hook that if you throw it, you can hit someone further away and damage them and slow them, but with the added benefit of pulling that champion towards you. Why would you want to pull someone towards you? If you're playing the support, you may want to pull someone away from their... their um, partner player so that you can isolate and, and 2v1 them. Maybe you want to pull them away from their turret. Maybe you want to pull them closer to your team so you guys can have a you know a chance to kill them. Whatever it is, it's a great utility to have to pull someone out of whatever position they want to be in and closer to you if you want to deal damage to them. Okay. The downside of this is make sure you're not pulling someone in that can kill you and you're allowing them to close the distance on you. All right. So either way, though, two different parts of this ability. Um, both deal great damage, have great utility, slow, uh, and really allow you to make sure that you can put out some damage and trades to get people to, to kill range. All right. Better pike players will just be more comfortable with this with this ability um, knowing when to stab knowing when to hook and you guys will get better at that as you play more games with pike the next ability that you're going to max out and pick up in lane is going to be e phantom undertone so it's pretty much just a dash like a lot of other champions have dashes the cool part of this dash is it leaves behind this phantom trail and any enemies caught as that phantom returns to your character model are going to get stunned Okay, really, really good because even if someone wants to try and follow you or has another dash to follow you as you run away, if they end up in this pretty thick uh, line between the Phantom and yourself, they're going to get stunned. They won't be able to keep following you. Okay, so right away you can see this has a great disengage um, value to you as a champion to get out of sticky situations because you can just E away and they'll get stunned. The E can go over and through walls, so really good. You can be very creative with how you want to run away. Or... You can be aggressive and think about creative ways to try and engage on champions and close distances from areas they might not expect, okay? So right at level 2, even when you just pick up your Q and your E, you can already look to get creative with a bit of a mini combo and start to try and kill people, all right? So try and think about your E as either engage or disengage, and then your Q is damage from different ranges. So if you wanted to, you could E into a champion, stun them, auto Q, and just keep autoing and deal a bunch of damage, right? Or you could maybe hook someone into you and then E away and stun them and kind of get double CC, right? Like Pike is about making plays with the abilities you have, not so much predefined combos. Okay, so just try and understand what abilities um, offer you and then in which situations you want to use them. When you get to level 3 and you put a point in W, and this is going to be the last ability you max out, Ghost Water Dive, you can start to get creative with your first kind of actual combo with Pike, I'd say. And that combo is going to be 
W-ing to turn, kind of basically camouflaged and unseen to get close to the enemy champion to land on auto attack in a queue and keep autoing, okay? This is your bread and butter trade. When you press W, you get camouflaged. If you're close enough to someone, they'll have these little shark fins kind of show up around them and it'll let them know that, hey, Pike's in the area. They won't be able to even see you though. All they see is those little shark fins. If you get close enough, you're gonna see a warning show up around them that, hey, this guy might be able to see you if you get any closer. And then if you actually get close enough, you're gonna see that icon turn um, purple and then that's when they're going to be able to see basically an outline of your phantom and know where you are but because your w gives you move speed by the time they see that outline you're already right next to them and you can auto and cue them and deal a bunch of damage right like a thousand damage before they can react so their basic combo here at level three or if you just want to focus on a basic combo using three abilities you w in you auto you cue you keep autoing and then you decide do you want to try and keep the trade going? If so, you're going to E ahead of that champion to get between them and their turret, stun them and keep autoing. If you don't want to keep the trade going, you're just looking for a short little quick trade, the combo is going to be to E out. So you're going to W, auto, Q, and then you're going to E away and make sure they can't follow you. And they never will because they're going to get stunned in the E. So it's pretty much free trades. So you're just going to keep doing W, auto, Q, and then E away from the enemy champion and keep those trades going until they get to within kill range and you can whittle them down. All right, very safe trading pattern. W, auto, Q, and then either E in or E out, depending on what you want to do with that trade. Okay? Now, finally, we're going to talk about the R here, which is the most defining ability for Pike, and that's his death from below. It's pretty much an executing ability where you're going to teleport and deal a bunch of damage. If the enemy champion's below a certain threshold, you're just going to straight up execute them and kill them. When you execute champions, you're going to be able to cast the ability for free again. So ideally, you want to use this ability only when the enemy champion is in execute range. Okay, now I know right now the client's a bit buggy, it's not showing it. But when you play in your games against enemy champions, their health bar is going to have this really big line and highlighting showing that, oh, they're in execute range. It'll be really apparent. You'll know when to press R on them. And then you press R on them and execute them. And then you can keep casting it as long as you keep executing people if you don't happen to execute someone that's fine it still deals some damage you just won't be able to cast it again on someone else okay so think about it like a darius r now there's a couple things to talk about here in terms of the hitbox that i think is important it's an x but it's pretty like uh, you can hit people all over the place with it. It's not super defined. Of course, you can miss it, but like even that one I was trying to miss, you still hit it. You can miss it, so just make sure you understand the hitbox is still an X. The center of it, I would treat more of like a big circle than anything as opposed to a true X, but there are edges of it that if you just want to try and cast it on someone kind of almost out of range, you might be able to hit them just on the corner of one of those Xs. Okay, so it does give you a little bit of uh, leeway and extension on where you might want to cast it. All right. Now, it does pull you into wherever your target is that you're hitting if it's a champion, even if you don't execute them. So make sure you understand that it does teleport you to the champion that you're hitting. Okay. You can use it on minions and monsters in the jungle. It just won't teleport you to those minions or monsters you can see here. It just keeps you in the same spot, even though it's dealing damage. All right, so now that we have our R, you guys should have the basic theme here. You're just going to tie it onto the combo if they're in execute range. So you're going to W, you're going to auto, Q, keep the trade going with an E if you want, and you're ready to kill them, and then R if they're in execute. If you're not ready to kill them, then you just do the trade where you W in, auto, Q, E away, wait for your cooldowns to come back, and then go in and keep going until you're ready to kill them with that combo. Okay, that's it as a beginner. That's the only combo you need to learn. You W in, you auto Q, and then you decide if you're ready to kill them or not with the ER, or if you want to E away and save the R for another trade. Even when you roam to different lanes, like let's say I was roaming up to mid after helping my jungler, and this is my mid laner, that's your combo. You're going to W in from the side. They're not going to see you until it's too late, and then you're going to decide to keep the trade going and kill them, or just you know, E and disengage and then try and kill them on the next engage.
okay so with all that said hopefully that makes sense if you guys have questions leave them in the comments below there's a bunch of cool little obviously tricks that you'll figure out with all these abilities and interactions as you play more pike but i'll leave that to you this is just a beginner's guide let's now take everything we learned into a sample lane phase and talk about how to play mid lane as pike so you guys can really start to snowball successfully in most of your games all right, so we're in mid lane here. We picked up our starting items during shield and health potion. We're going to talk you guys through how to play the lane phase with Pike. It's really tough, obviously, because you don't really have wave clear. You don't have range. You're going to pop off and win games by roaming around and getting gold with your R, okay? Anytime you kill someone, you're going to pick up a bunch of gold with the R, even if it's just kind of a kill steal. And it's cool because you still share that gold with your ally champion. So you're never stealing gold from anyone when you execute with Pike if they were going to get an assist or the kill otherwise. So really you're looking to make your money not in lane with Pike. You're just looking to survive lane, maybe get some kills on them at level 2, 3, or at 6 when you power spike with your combo abilities. But other than that, you're really looking to play the game outside of mid lane. So you're going to pick up your Q here. That's going to be your first ability. Generally level 1, you just want to chill we don't want to take any damage. If we can pick up a last hit or a hook because this guy wants to overextend, you can hook them in and go for a quick mini trade. You have your bone plating, so it's going to reduce the damage you take back. But generally, people will not walk in front of the minion line like this rise here and give you the opportunity to hook them like so okay now we missed that one the hitbox was a little bit wonky on that one but again we're just trying to display the fact that here in lane you're really not going to have the opportunity to pick up a bunch of last hits without taking damage like i'm taking right there okay you will heal back a little bit of that damage with your passive but in general again try and stay as healthy as possible until at least level two you can use your q to last hit minions at range with the tap or with the pull um but it's not really, again, still the most effective trading tool. Now, at level 2, this is when you can start to look for a trade. So here, we're going to E over the rise, auto, Q, if they get too close, and you're going to get a kill. Because you're going to get pushed in a lot with Pike, that situation is actually a lot more often than people realize. Now, I didn't have to suck him into the turret with a pulled Q, but you could, and that's a very popular way to get kills at level 2 or level 3 with Pike if they're pushing you in. You're just chilling. You're just waiting for an opportunity to land that hook on them maybe you hook them into the tower and you get a kill summoners are always going to be flash ignite because you're looking for kill pressure at all times with pike as an assassin so you want to make sure you're always running those two sums now again we can't really push waves that good so if you happen to get a kill and you want to spend gold go ahead and do so pike really doesn't abide by the normal rules of a mid laner where you always have to shove before you roam of course it's ideal but it's not mandatory Okay, so here we can do something cheeky before we recall where we're going to use our basic combo. I'm going to kind of get halfway up river here. And then I'm going to press W to move a little bit faster and have camouflage going into the Zyra. And then what's our combo? Auto Q E. Okay, so here, auto Q E. And then we keep the trade going by E in ahead of her and then just autoing her down. Okay, we're going to take a quick recall now since we have about a thousand gold. Spend that gold come back to mid lane rinse and repeat this process even if we can't get a kill on rise we're just going to keep roaming and looking for chances to kill other laners who are pushed up okay so first item rush here is going to be that umbral glaive like we talked about so let's pick up a serrated dirk if you wanted to here you could pick up boots to roam a little bit faster but i'm pretty sure we're going to have a good opportunity to kill our laner so in that case you want to pick up damage if you think you can kill your laner pick up damage if you don't think you can kill your laner and you're going to have to roam for kills early on pick up the boots but here again i could really stress out about missing some of these minions it's actually more important to make sure that you can get the kill so here we stab him i want to keep this trade going because i'm stronger than him now with my serrated dirk so i just e into him to keep the trade going and here we can ignite an auto with a, with a flash and get another kill okay now it keeps going right like as soon as your ability is off cooldown you're always looking to w in auto q and then e in or e away so here we go we're running topside i know i can't push the minion wave too effectively so i'm looking for gold from kills okay we're going to W in, so we're camouflaged. She doesn't know which direction we're coming from. It's too late now. We're already in range. We're going to E ahead of her because we want to keep this trade going. And then we're going to kill her with autos from here. 
or Nidalee is going to steal it with an auto from range. All right? And keep rinsing and repeating. So we'll pop a health potion here to get a little bit of health back. And then what are we going to do to this rise? We're going to W in, auto Q, and then E if we want to keep the trade going ahead of him. If we don't, we're just going to E away. So here we go. Kind of just before you enter vision, W. Okay. Auto Q. Boom, boom, boom. Here, let's say we want to not keep the trade going. Then we just E back. And now we wait a few seconds for our abilities to come off cooldown, and we do it again. So I'm just going to hang out within XP range, because you still want to make sure, even if you're not getting last hits, you're getting that XP. And then what do we do? We W, he's lost vision, auto Q. Here we want to keep the trade going, so I E ahead of him, and I auto him down and get another kill. Okay, we've got level 6 now, so we can make sure that we can start to tie in our ult to finish people off in the combos. And again, I don't even know if it's worth here pushing this lane with pike because your wave push is so slow you can see it here i think i can do it fast enough before the rise comes back to lane so i'm going to do it but again your gold income really isn't coming from pushing minion waves as pike it's coming from resetting and getting kills in the top in the bot lanes or with your jungler in the enemy jungle playing quite aggressively Okay, so we'll pick up the mobility boots now because we have enough gold to get those and start flying around the map. Now, when you're strong like this and you've recalled with Pike, you have a few options. You can head back to mid if you feel like there's still kill gold there for you, or you can head straight to a side lane depending on if someone's pushed up. So I see Mundo kind of pushed up here. I'm going to E and W coming out of base so I can get to this position faster because they allow me to cover the distance faster. By the time I get back to this area, both will be off cooldown so that's a cool little trick for you guys to make sure you get to areas faster on the map and then again just before we enter vision in the lane here you want to w you're going to run in auto q and then keep the trade going if you want with an e or disengage if you don't want to keep the trade going by e out here he's within kill range now if i do one more combo so i'm just going to sit out of vision and i'm going to wait a few seconds to do that same combo again we're going to w in we're going to auto Q, and then we're going to keep the trade going this time by Ian. And he's in execute range. He actually used ult. You can see that that execute bar popped up. It was glowing red. That was our ticket to go. But I misjudged how fast he would heal with his ultimate. So unlucky there for us. But that's the kind of stuff you guys are going to pick up more and more as you play more pike games. Okay? So when you're going through uh, lanes like this, this is when you want to make sure you scan for vision. Um, it'll help make sure that you keep vision clear. And then again, back to our bread and butter combo, Wing in, auto, Q, auto, auto, auto. If I don't want to keep this trade going because he's actually winning it now, I just E out. Okay, wait 10 seconds for everything to come off cooldown. Do it again. Kind of stay out of vision, but make sure you're in XP range. Okay. If you don't have to W to start the trade because he's just going to walk into you, you can do this too. And then again, E ahead to keep the trade going and kill them. If someone is giving you a free Q and they're walking up to you and you don't need to W into them, you can take it. That's completely fine. Okay. So here again, because Rise is dead and I think I can push this big wave in before he gets back, I'll just use my autos and my Qs to try and do that as fast as possible. And then I'll have a decision in front of me to either roam to top to try and kill this Zyra or roam to bot. Because bot lane this game is a lot tankier and his ult kind of, you know, nixes my ult, it's much safer and more consistent to roam top to the Zyra. Have to be careful, she could burst me here, but again, just before she sees us, W in. Auto, Q, auto, auto, auto. Keep the trade going in this case because I think I have her in kill range. And then R her when you see her health bar turn that glowing red. Now again, there's no one else for me to kill here, but because I killed her with an execute, I can cast my R again for free. So in this case, I'm going to use it on the minions to make sure I shove this lane out as fast as possible. Guys, that's pretty much it with Pike. You're just going to keep doing this strategy, rinse and repeat. The hard part about playing him well is actually keeping your map awareness up to know which areas to go and roam to to look for those kills. 
and playing alongside your jungler. Because this is just a game against bots, we don't really have a jungler here. I will post a, um, a full game commentary against real players for you guys to see how maybe you can follow along with your jungler. But the, the mechanics of playing this champion is very simple at a fundamental level. The more games you get, the more creative you can get with your combos and interactions. So here, auto, Q, auto, auto, auto. Keep the trade going with the E. And then we're just going to keep autoing him down here, staying in front of him to make sure that we can keep autoing him and then cue him for the kill. Okay, guys, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that uh, beginner's guide to Pike. We covered off a lot of stuff, but hopefully it was pretty digestible. If you enjoy the content, let me know with a like or a comment on the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.